Amazon, Microsoft, and OpenAI all announced new generative AI tools and features. Is this part two of the AI gold rush? We're going to look at what was announced and what kind of impact this will have on this episode of Today in Tech. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. The man behind the camera who does not like adjectives is Chris. Hello, sir. What's up? All right. So... This is something we've been waiting for for a while with this whole generative AI space. And it was, what would Amazon do with its Alexa devices? Uh, I have a similar question about Apple and Siri, but they haven't answered that question yet. But Amazon last week uh, jumped on the advanced AI bandwagon with an elaborate demonstration at its HQ2 offices in Arlington, Virginia. In one demo, Dave Limp, who was the outgoing head of Amazon's device business, carried on a chatty back and forth conversation with the voice assistant without repeating the wake word Alexa. Uh, Basically, they've added its own large language model technology to the device. So in the future, when they uh, deploy this to everybody, you will be able to have better non-computer-like discussions with Alexa. So basically what that means is now it's Alexa is definitely going to be listening to you 24 seven. Well, I think, I think you could still turn it on or off or you could tell it to stop listening. Yeah. Um, as I was reading a bunch of these articles about this announcement, it, it didn't necessarily answer the question that I would have about Amazon and Alexa. And it's more about, Alexa still won't be able to ask questions or answer questions that you have based on the need for a search result. So where you can use chat GPT and some of these other generative AI, some of these really big ones, you type in a request and then generative AI spits out an answer because it's integrated with the search engine. With Alexa, the problem that Amazon has is they don't have a, their own search engine. They would have to make a deal with Google. They would have to make a deal with uh, Microsoft for Bing or whatever yeah. in order to integrate search results into any, any kind of questions. So instead, what they're doing is they're trying to allow Alexa to do the second function of what it can do, which is turn on the lights, turn off the lights. If I've got smart lights somewhere, if I've got plugs, you know, if I'm connected to the Nest thermostat, if you know connected to the ring camera in this whole smart home ecosystem asking doing voice commands should be easier so that instead of saying alexa or echo turn turn up the thermostat you can say alexa it's cold in here and it will understand that you're cold which means that it has to turn up the thermostat now, there's, there's the potential for a lot of hallucinations that could happen here. They are going to roll it out slowly. You currently have to be on a wait list in order to experience this. But most of my frustrations with Alexa is I don't... Sometimes I'm looking for the answer to something. I'm not near a computer. I'm, I don't have my phone with me. I want those answers. I want my smart assistant to be able to answer any question I have and then also perform any task. Yeah. Do you have one of the, you don't, you don't even, you probably don't have any of these in your house, do you? Because you live in a bunker somewhere underground. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I think we have the Google Dot, um, you know, the little round. Yep. It's basically Google. I mean, it's, you know, it's like ask Google something and, you know, it'll say whatever. But Do you know if that's we, been integrated with, with AI yet? I have no idea, but... Um, you should go home tonight and ask it. No, no, no. I... Um, <laughs> I mean, we, we barely use it. We, we use it to set a timer when yep. we're cooking something. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Everything else is on our phone. Okay. You, know. you don't find yourself with, with times where you might not have access to your phone if it's charging somewhere? Uh, you don't want to get off the couch and you don't want to, your phone is being recharged, you know, half a, half a 10 feet away? Yeah. So if our phone is in the kitchen charging and we're in the entertainment room <laughs> yeah. watching a movie, we usually just... Get up. <laughs> Stand up and oh, walk. You're, you're so old school. <laughs> 20, 25 feet, however far away our kitchen is. And uh, we'll just look at our phone and, you know, or we have, you know, one of those portable battery banks. But yeah, no, we just, we just try not to be lazy. Okay. All right. I guess. Yeah. I, I, well, you know, I am what I am. <laughs> uh, later, some of the other demos that they showed, 
had uh, Alexa recommending movies and carrying out smartphone routines after hearing natural requests from user instead of these scripted command phrases. Um, apparently, the responses also sounded more natural, and they would have off-the-cuff phrasing rather than canned jokes and replies that you've heard for years. Um, you know, when you've asked Alexa to tell you a joke, it's usually something really stupid. But not that ChatGPT is any better in, in terms of its its sense of humor. Um, there was something that that I wanted to to, to talk about in this. Mm-hmm. case as well mm-hmm. it was i think they were using it to show a demo of a tv oh okay in one so th- they're also going to integrate this into their amazon fire tv yeah and right. so a guy asked the assistant to quote find some action movies for me and it did and then he followed up with show me the ones i don't have to pay for uh which then gives you a different list uh which is one of my complaints about the amazon fire tv we have one of those where if you ever use Amazon Prime, it lumps together all of the movies. It, it get, if you pay for Prime, mm-hmm. you usually get some free movies, but they sprinkle them in with all of the other movies that you would have to pay for, yeah. mainly because Amazon wants you to pay for it, right? They don't want to just give you free content. What the heck would that... That wouldn't benefit them at all. So it's interesting that they, this, this new Alexa will be able to show you the free stuff to choose from well, rather than this this big blob of everything that's available. Yeah, I mean, it's all it is is just a filter in guise of AI, right? Instead of typing it in yourself or pressing a button that says filter for, you know, free movies, it's us using our voice be like, "Hey, can you filter the movies uh that are free?" and it uses its AI magic to just do the filtering. I mean, I yeah, I don't know why it's that huge of a deal because it, again, it's going from typing it in or pressing a button to now just telling it. You know, you're giving it a, a voice command. Well, the the big deal is that when they came out with these devices, everyone was expecting Jarvis from Iron Man. Yeah, and they didn't get that. They got. I don't even. There's there's not even an equivalent. They they got a dumb house robot from the 1980s. Well, it just becomes a search c- c- Most, query. And search again, I, I I just asked you what you use your Google Dot for, and you said for timers. Um, that's what we use ours for. We said set a timer, set an alarm. Yeah, I mean, cause play like, some music because we have tied it to our Spotify account. Because like, like like here's the thing. Like if we want to truly use our Google Dot or Alexa or whatever you have. If you really want to, you know, use it and and integrate it into your daily life, the rest of your house is going to have to be, a, you know, a smart application, right? Your fridge, your oven, yep. your lights, your window shades, like they'd all have to like, hey, if I want to say, hey, I'm in the entertainment room. Can, can I, can I, can you, uh, hey, Google, can you close all the shades in the entertainment room? I can't. It's not going to do that because the rest of my house and my shades aren't aren't hooked up to Wi-Fi. Well, you know? that's the, that was the whole point of the the Matter protocol. Remember the episode we did with the guy from Matter? No, I, I know, I, but I, like, I think you were sleeping during that one. <laughs> no, but the thing is, is like my blind our blinds that we have are old school blinds. Like oh, we would so have you to have to go buy you have to go buy automated internet that's, connected. That's what blinds. I'm saying. Is yeah. like if you really wanted to have this AI tech integrate into your house, the rest of your house is going to have to be wired for that. Yeah. You know, whether whether there's an app out there or a technology that can kind of unify all the different tech into one, the point is, is you're, you're still going to have to have that third-party tech. Yep. Your, your lights are going to have to be the, you know, Google lights, right? Well, I can't that, do that, that with my regular well, Philips incandescent bulb, right? You, well, you need Philips. the right bulbs <laughs> to do it. And I don't think, I don't think, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to do that because, you know, cha-ching, you know, you got you to gotta buy all this. Unless, unless you're building a new house, you know, you're building a new structure, you're building a new house, or, you know, you have the money for it where you can totally outfit your whole house. You got your smart fridge, smart oven, smart washer, dryer, smart toilet, smart lawn mower, you know, your your smart iRobot. Like, then you can fully integrate your house and take advantage of this. But, like, as, as a prototype, it's cool. It's cool to hear about and see it. I don't know. It's... Are you done? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's just another thing I'm not going to use, you know? Like, like, like Stuff again, like, I, like I have the Google Dot. Like, yeah, set a timer for when the, the chicken's okay. done in the oven, you All know? Right. Or that's it. 
you will eventually see light bulbs that are integrated into these systems. You will be able to connect them. It'll just be new stuff that you'll, if you really want, you, do you really want an automated smart blind system? See, that, Probably not at the moment. Well, okay. It's going to depend. It's really going to depend. And, and, and I would want it personally. Yeah. Because our entertainment room has 14 windows <laughs> and our TV is a glossy screen. It's not yeah. a matte finish, yeah. you know? It's, it's not a super high-end TV. It's a 75-inch, but it's got a glossy screen. So with the in a room with 14 windows, okay, we have the blinds where you have to pull the string, right? You know, you pull them open. Yeah. You got to let it go to for, them, for them to close. We really want to get either automated blinds. That would be amazing. Yep. Okay, so we can just say, hey, hey, Google, can you close all the blinds in the entertainment room? That's 14 blinds we don't have to close. Because right. right now it's a process. Yeah. It's a process. And uh, the, the the thing that we want to try to do is, is get those blinds to just, we want to get the, you know, you just pull down and push open. It, we want to at least get those. But if there existed blinds out there right now, and I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they have them yeah. where you can hook them up to your Wi-Fi, to Google, whatever. Yeah. They're automated. They have a little motor in them, whatever, and they'll they'll operate on command. They That would be something useful and, okay. and, and worth, worth getting that tech integrated. All right. So those types of things do exist. Yeah. They probably connect to an app mm -hmm. on your phone, so you could do it through the app. There probably is some Alexa integration with Google. Yep. Or with Amazon integration. I'm not, there's probably some Google integration too. The problem is, is that the time it would take for you to, no, not just the money. I mean, the money is going to, that'd be part well, of it. Well, automating that, blinds, yeah, that's going to cost yeah, you some money. But, 14, but integrating 14. it, no, no, integrating it into your system. Integrating it would be fine. It's, you These know, are 14 it, individual windows. What kind of house is this? 14, 14 individual windows. Are they big? Are they small? They're, you know, regular size window. We have fourteen of them. You live in a you live in a bunker. I thought you were all underground. There's no windows underground. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm no, it's 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 an attachment. Okay, it, it's it was it was a newer attachment that so was. So maybe your your entertainment room is in the wrong room of the house. No, it's the biggest room. <laughs> it's it's the biggest room, but it has fourteen windows. And if ever we're watching a well, wouldn't those wouldn't you be able to find smart blinds that could that could um synchronize all of the blinds to move all at the same time that's what i'm saying yeah that's what i'm saying but like yes those blinds exist i'm going to do some the, research and find 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 yeah, some blinds the, for you. those blinds exist the problem is there's 14 of them okay so if and when we were doing our research we have uh i know this is going on on a tangent i'll, I'll end it that's quickly. okay that's um, what this show's it, all about don't worry about it we, we want to get again we want to get those blinds where you just pull down to close and you lift up and they stay open <laughs> just you know it's i think and, and those are in you know we you got to look but starting prices like 120 130 per blind yeah you multiply that by 14 that's thousands of dollars exactly and yeah. and don't forget, you got to install them. Install fourteen. Install it fourteen times. Now, if we were so, really unethical, we'd find a blinds company to to send us these things, and we would give them a review after we installed it at your house. And absolutely. Of course, it would be a positive review uh, because we don't want to send this stuff back, and we don't want to give them a negative review. Right. Right. So, hey, if you're out there, send Chris some blinds. If anybody's actually, <laughs> here we go. All right, I think the Amazon thing is a good thing, but except for the fact that I'd like it to be tied into more of a search engine. And and so one of the stories did say that that one of the demonstrations they did was, hey, how did how did Geno Smith do in the last game? I guess he's the quarterback for Seattle, so of course that's an Amazon thing. And the answer was, oh, he threw for 328 passing yards and had two passing touchdowns. So they did they did go to some search engine for the results there. Um, they do say that the product has guardrails so that you can't have it do some hallucinating type things. Mm -hmm. um, again, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll hold my judgment on this until I get a chance to, to experience and play with it. So I'll report on an, a future episode about whether this Amazon Alexa AI integration is, is going to be cool or not. So... We're going to move on to the next uh, the next story was OpenAI. Uh, the creators of ChatGPT has released a new version of its Dolly image generator to a small group of testers folding the technology into ChatGPT. 
Dall E3 will be able to produce more convincing images than previous numbers of um, previous versions of the technology, especially when it comes to images that contain letters, numbers, and human hands. They figured it out. They figured out the hands, the letters, and the numbers thing. Um, Google also released a new version of its Bard chatbot uh, and MidJourney and Stable Diffusion. Those are the other two competing uh, image generators. They updated their models over the summer. Um, now, Dolly and ChatGPT were previously separate applications, but with this release, people can now use ChatGPT's service to produce digital images simply by describing what they want uh, to see, or they can generate image uh, images using descriptions generated by the chatbot, further automating the generation of graphics, art, and other media. Uh, OpenAI said that it is not sharing Dolly 3 with the wider public until next month. But then it will only be available through ChatGPT Plus, which costs twenty dollars per month. Now, if you look at some of the screens, uh, if you look at some of the images on the screen here, um, those are some some of the new generated by AI images that you can create. But um, is this the one that's on the New York Times article? Uh, yes. Yeah. If you can switch to the uh, their blog post, the doll, the OpenAI blog post that shows, yeah, oh, this there thing. We go. Yeah. So. If you scroll down a little bit, so right here, what's interesting about this is apparently a lot of the things that were in this image were things generated by text. So if you look to the left, the sidewalks are bustling with pedestrians enjoying the nightlife, a bustling city street under the shine of a full moon. Um, the grumpy vendor, a tall, sophisticated man, is wearing a sharp suit, sports a no noteworthy mustache, and is animatedly conversing on a steampunk telephone. And so all of these images are now being created into this, this, this image. Um, if you scroll down a little further, uh, it's a picture of, on the left is Dolly 2, and on the right is Dolly 3. And the prompt for both of these images was an expressive oil painting of a basketball player dunking depicted as an explosion of a nebula. So that created those images. Now, would you agree that the images on the right, the image on the right, does it look better than what was generated before on the left? Oh, yeah. I mean, it looks more granular. It's more detailed and refined. Yeah. Where, um, where it's a little blobby looks, on the left. Yeah. The left looks like it's, you know, it's abstract basically so i do like the idea of of this number and also you see on the on the the image on the right you could see the number so he is wearing you know number 21 yeah um every time i've tried to have uh ai generate something with a letter or a number in it mm -hmm. it just gets this blob of like what it thinks are letters and numbers but are, is incorrect so sometimes in my prompt generation i have to tell it you know no text or no images because i've had it try to create logos and movie posters and things like that and it, it wants to put in words for the movie posters but it it it's it messes up royally right so and again i want to show you so there was two there's two other images that we want to show um, last, uh, on, on a previous episode, we were talking about, remember those Microsoft leaks? Yep. And, and we talked about the, the fact that, that, um, Phil Spencer wanted to, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft. potentially, yeah, from Microsoft, uh, slash Xbox wanted to purchase Nintendo or was thinking about, Hey, we should buy Nintendo, even though Nintendo would never do this. But so, so you and I went to, to mid journey and we created some images of, what would the characters from Nintendo look like if they worked at Microsoft? And we right. created a little little YouTube short. So go to our shorts area and you'll see that 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 slideshow. But we want to show two particular pictures that we liked. Uh, this first one was Princess Peach uh, working at Microsoft. Um, now this was the one that so they they did generate three different images. Um, more looked like the cartoon character, but this was more of a realistic depiction of what a Princess Peach working at Microsoft might look like. Um, although you actually said that this was Princess Peach ready to go to see Barbie again. Yeah, you know, you know, it's funny. <laughs> it did a really good job depicting, depicting, you know, what these Nintendo characters would look like if they were bought by, by Microsoft. Because when you think of Microsoft, you think of corporate. Yeah, Destro and that was, that was the joke. I think my prompts were all, right. what if, you know, uh, imagine Princess Peach wearing a suit uh, working at Microsoft. Yeah. Now, the AI did understand who Princess Peach was and that she was wearing pink. Right. I never had to specify wearing a pink suit. Um, I just said wearing a business suit and right. working in an office and you get kind of the background so here. When I saw this for the first time, I, I, I was thinking either uh, one of two things. 
one, she's, like you said, she's ready to go watch Barbie for the hundredth time. <laughs> Or she's ready to go file a complaint to HR. Because of, of all, because again, all of the men in the background, which shows a little bit of the AI, AI bias. It's like, why aren't there more women in the background in this office? Well, actually. Or is she at a trade show? Well, actually, hold on a second. Let me uh, back out here. Okay. So see the guy over her right shoulder, her right shoulder. Okay. The guy with the beard? Look, look at his hand. Oh, yo, yo, you caught it with the hand. Look at that. Nice. That, that's a uh, that's a weird looking that hand. That is there. a weird looking hand. I did not so even notice that the first I, time. I just I just noticed that. Wow. And, and now if we move over to uh, the uh, prime Nintendo character over here, right. Mario, so, again, first thing I thought of was he literally just opened a malicious email <laughs> and unleashed a virus upon his company. And that's the expression I would have. <laughs> the expression was like, oops. <laughs> yep. Yep. I wanted to include this one. Go back. Go go back. You don't have to show me. Go. All right. So I wanted to include this one because Nintendo, like, again, the AI understands what Mario looks like from a cartoonish perspective. There were a couple of other images that that produced, like, a, a more human looking character, but then with a mustache and a hat. Um, now, obviously where he's wearing a suit here and probably the hands are messed up here too. I don't know if you want to zoom. Can you zoom in on those? Those well, hands, there might be multiple fingers. Well, if there. you actually, if, yeah, if you look at his, his left hand, um, here, let me just, you know, you got one, two, three, four, five already in picture. So it's yeah. like, you probably have a seven and an eight digit on the other side of that. <laughs> so I, I'm, I don't want, I can't pay $20 a month for this for the dolly three um but i'm fascinated by the potential of of these letters and numbers um again this was mid journey that that i do pay i think it's like five bucks a month it's not that or fifteen dollars every three months i don't i remember what the what the charge is but it's 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 affordable Mm -hmm. uh stable diffusion i think it's free for a bunch of credits and then you can pay as well um i again i think that the models are getting better and better and at least in this case, you know, Mario and Princess Peach and all the other characters are it, um, are not something that would be dangerous if I was going to do some political ones like, you know, with Biden or Trump or any, any of those types of people. Right. I think the guardrails are set up so that you, we're not trying to create deep fake. Like, for, you know, no one's actually going to believe this, those images, because Mario doesn't exist. Right. Now, I did, here's my Mario joke. I, I realized this at the end of the show. Um, they should actually buy... Nintendo, because then Mar- Mario can fix the leaks. Oh, there you go. See? There, yep. The plumber can fix the leaks, of the, all the problems they're having with data leaks and uh, document leaks. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm here all week. Try the veal. Uh, okay, so speaking of Microsoft, uh, they also have announced they are unifying all of their co-pilot features uh, into kind of a this one everyday AI companion type thing. They're gonna basically Microsoft is throwing AI at everything. Then they already sort of announced they were doing this, but now it's going to be under this unified Copilot brand, and it's going to be coming to Windows, Edge, everywhere else. Um, you're going to see it on your desktop. You're going to see it if you have Microsoft 365. It's going to be integrated into Outlook. It's going to be in the Edge browser. Yes, it's still going to be in Bing. Um, in a blog post announcing the unification, and here's a quote from the blog, and this is Microsoft. Are you ready for the most boring description of AI that you've ever heard? Let's hear Get it. Get ready for this. All right. Copilot will uniquely incorporate the context and intelligence of the web, your work data, and what you are doing in the moment on your PC to provide better assistance with your privacy and security at the forefront. Wow. Only Microsoft can make something as exciting as AI into something as boring as, as work. <laughs> So they're further, so basically what they're saying is they're further going to make the branding of all these apps more cohesive under one icon. Uh, I get, At least that's what I'm getting it's, watching their demo here. Yeah, it's going to, it's going to be basically there's, it, it's going to be additional buttons, additional clicks. You're going to, if you use a tool a lot, you're going to notice it. If you don't use this tool a lot, you won't. Yeah. Uh, it depends on how embedded you are into this microsoft universe 
you know, we have uh, Microsoft 365, but I use it on a Mac, so I don't know if how integrated it's going to be there versus if you're on a straight PC. I might start to notice it on my Windows PC gaming laptop, but I try not to use that for things beyond just the gaming stuff. Um, but there were some interesting announcements that I wanted to bring up. Um, for example, they're integrating AI into their paint application. Uh, I, well, from the looks of it, they're integrating it into everything. Right. 150 uh, different everything. new features. Yeah, 150 new features. But so with paint, for example, um, I didn't realize that people still used Microsoft Paint, but apparently there are some people that still do that. So you now can do background removal and layers within Microsoft Paint. Um, in photos, for example, you can now do background blur. Um, there's uh, you know new ways to capture content through the snipping tool. Um, there's something called ClipChamp that I have no idea what that is. Um, the Notepad apparently will automatically save your session state, allowing you to close it without any interrupting dialogues and pick up where you left off versus, you know, trying to remember to save your documents before you close it. Um, that That's great if you're in that Windows universe. And so, you know, if you're in that universe, you know, you're going to have all these new features that you have to look up and figure out how to do. Um, if you go to the Bing, uh, I don't know if there's... Well, go to that that announcement as opposed to sending these, the playing these... Um, for Bing and Edge, your chat history can now inform your results. Now, this is this sounds scary as hell, but I'm going to explain. So, for example, if you've used Bing to track your favorite soccer team, the next time you're planning a trip, it will proactively tell you if the team is playing in your destination city. If you prefer responses that don't use your chat history, you can turn this feature off in Bing settings. I suppose if I was... Okay, so I'm not going to use soccer team because, again... Right, let's just use uh, American football. So yeah. uh, I've done a lot of searches about the New England Patriots, uh, and then I'm planning a trip to Denver. It would tell me if, if they were coming, if, if, if the Patriots were in town. But I think I would know that already, being a fan of, of a certain town or yeah. team. Maybe, maybe the example would be better if it was your, uh, your, your favorite band that you've done some research on might be touring or might be in the area. Um, things like that, it might grab from your search history. Mm -hmm. I'm a little, I'm a little paranoid about anything related to search history, to be honest. Well, I don't think any system should know what I've been searching for or what I do. Uh, they already know. I know that. They're, 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 are you kidding me? So they was, already know. So this so is old saying, news. They, they already know. They're saying the quiet part out loud. <laughs> Even if you use incognito, every, the information's there. It's just so like, here's the thing. I use I, seven different VPNs and I route it around the world. You, my, you all of my a, web traffic is coming from uh, Africa or the Eastern Europe. You use a VPN for your VPN. I, yeah. I've got a VPN on my VPN. You on got my a triple VPN. VPN though. Yeah, but here's, a, here's the thing. I, I just watched this. So we well, we we all watch this together just right now. They're kind of like demo of introducing Copilot and Windows 11, new yeah. AI tools and more. I guess my concern is, or I guess my question is, is like, should we be, should we have any concern over this at all? Because it, from the looks of it, what I just saw, like looking at this, having this, having uh, Microsoft integrate AI into their whole Windows 11 operating system is like... Uh, so, so like like here's the thing here here's the thing let me let me just what's your concern let me let me try to break this down yeah looking at all the features that this is covering to me in my opinion in my opinion it looks like this is covering all the aspects of jobs that, that companies people. don't want to pay for <laughs> well so let me explain okay it's it's showcasing it's AI, it's use of AI in graphic design, in in summarizing articles, uh -huh. in writing, yeah, um, in 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 other aspects, you know, composing composing uh, images, customized images and stuff. And it's like if I were a company, and I have a marketing department, or or if I'm an advertising company, look, even compiling images for for slides and stuff like that, yeah. This is something you would have to pay your graphics team to do, your graphics department, whether that's internal or external. Right. Doesn't it just seem like 
we're using these for for jobs that we we don't want to pay for. Yeah, I I'm gonna be a little devil's advocate here for, sure, for sure, a second. Sure. First of all, the the types of images that these things are gonna produce are gonna be generic corporate looking it's not going to be very exciting mm-hmm. it's not going to be very skilled you're going to you're going to see a bunch it's going to be based on a lot of these templates a lot of the stuff you can already do and you're creating a powerpoint slide for example you you can choose from a number of different templates and the problem is is that most people that have to create a presentation are usually business people that could give two craps about creating a slide so what do they do they pick they pick a template that looks good to them or they get pick or they get told to use the corporate template because someone in the graphics department has said we need to be consistent with all of our presentations so that's first level is you just pick whatever the hell but you that, want but second level is you have to pick the corporate template but that corporate template was designed by someone at least right. today or right five years ago right right couple of years ago whatever so i think most companies will you know if they want to switch the template because i i'm not going to be able to use this ai generated powerpoint slide creator because it's not going to fall in line with the corporate template maybe the pictures on top of it will i i just think that it will you're, you're still going to get people you know the sales guy is still going to not want to spend any time learning how to do it so this button pushing thing is going to help him and then someone will see that and going, oh, this is this is awful looking. We should send this to the graphics department because there are people that still have graphic skills. That's one potential sort of sort of devil's advocate. Yeah, I guess it's operation. You know, it could it, 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 it could again Photoshop before Photoshop existed. Uh, not Photoshop before PowerPoint existed. You didn't have these slides. You didn't. You well, had. You, well, you had. Well, you had easels. You had easels. And easels you had a and big graph charts and cardboard chart. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. I get it. But I don't know. It just. It could just be me. It could just be me. And because you know I'm somewhat in the creator realm of things, and it's just like, man, I. If this gets too good, I mean. What's the point of having a graphics a graphics department? What's the point of having? Uh, well, we're not getting rid. Of, you know? We're not getting rid of you yet because no one else knows how to push those buttons yet. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a very boring short, you know, show if I can't talk to you about this kind of stuff. <laughs> right. Right. All right. One other thing I, I wanted to bring up with this Microsoft shopping, uh, not that anybody would use. Not that anybody's using this anyway. Wait, I, say it again. Microsoft. Shop. So there's a there's a thing I guess in Bing or Edge called Microsoft Shopping. You can allow Microsoft to do the shopping for you. Microsoft um, shopping. So from Bing or Edge, you can now more quickly find what you're shopping for online. When you ask for information on an item, Bing will ask additional questions to learn more, then use that information to provide more tailored recommendations. And you can trust you're getting the best price. In fact, in the last 12 months, shoppers have been offered more than $4 billion in savings on Microsoft Edge. Is this in the article? or That's in the blog post uh, explaining all of these new features oh, okay. of what they announced. Okay. Um, I don't think I have that, but that, that's that, that's fine. That was in that blog post. That the, the thing that you were playing in that video from. It was near near the bottom. I see. Okay. I get the feeling that Microsoft is so excited about AI. Uh, every, that it, yeah, yeah. That it that it wants to show the world that this investment that they made in OpenAI is so worth it that we're going to throw 150 new features at you and hope. That, that you will start using some of them and then say, oh my God, I can never switch to an Apple computer again should, or whatever. Should we... Sorry, just, just a, a sign yeah, here. Should we, should, we, should we mention the, the AI video uh, app that we've recently uh, become aware of? You don't have to mention Do them. By, mention don't that? mention them by name, but you, you no, can... No, no, no. It's, it's, it's an app. There's, okay. there's this, there's there's this an app, app out there yeah. that can generate... Um, AI a video, videos. a video of yeah. a person or you giving s- giving a presentation or exactly gi- giving a presentation, saying what you've written in the in the script, mm-hmm. and um, at first glance, it's uh, to, to my eyes, and I look at a screen, geez, all all day, it looks pretty flawless. It looks really really flawless, and this app has a business model to it. Yeah. As one would ex- expect, and um, I believe it had a a a demo period. I believe right. It, it had well, there like was a trial. A, there was a button that said "Try this for free." Yeah, try this for free. But if you wanted the app to actually do anything, 
<laughs> yeah, do something that's worth doing. You you had to pay the monthly, the monthly fee. Right, right. But when you you're like, okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead with the monthly fee. Okay, great. We well, want well, that monthly fee b- before before you get to that point. Yeah, sure. You, you you we set up a demo of something. We were like, okay, well, we've got some demo video. Let's try to see if it can do something. Well, we wanted and we wanted to translate we wanted to trans- it from English to right. Italian. So we, we, yeah, it was a little clip of me. It was it was our house ad for this show that you see on the YouTube channel if you don't subscribe to us. Right. Uh, it, me basically explaining what this show is about, it, but it's in English because that's the only language I know. And so we were t- attempting to take that video and you would synchronize it and then replace my English with a different language. So we tried Italian. But it would actually move your mouth right. as if it as if you were actually speaking. And it was not like Italian. and it was not like one of those old uh Japanese Dub. Godzilla movies, dubs. Yeah, it's it was, not gonna be dubbed over. It's gonna make you it's gonna make your mouth look like you're I'm actually, actually saying Italian. those words. But the problem is is like, okay, if you want to go ahead with that feature for free. Well, for free, you yeah. need to upgrade your your account to well, the monthly. No, no, and I think it was a monthly. But the thing is, with well, the mo- when the free version, they put us in a queue. Yeah, where we had to wait behind sixty six thousand <laughs> other users. <laughs> and did that did, has that line moved at all? Sixty six thousand. Have we checked I, to see if we're if we've moved up in the no, line at I, all? I don't think we. I don't think we've had. But this, this is like waiting for uh, Taylor Swift tickets. Sure. Sure. You know, sure. But so they, they want you to upgrade right to the monthly payment. And, and it, this and is it, where at first glance it was, it seemed affordable, right? Yeah. It seemed affordable. But the thing is, is they want the whole year up yeah. front. Yeah. So it was like 550, $550 up front here. And it just gets me thinking. And, and again, this could just be me. And again, it's just my opinion, but it's like, it just reminds you of a, just another gold rush with AI. Right. AI is the, the next gold rush. Before this, I think it was data. Yep. You had an influx of data scientists and you have companies utilizing their data and stuff like that. Data, data, data. That was the previous gold rush. Today, it's AI. How can we take AI? How can we integrate it into our infrastructures, into our workflow to then charge it and create a business model out of it? Right. Right. And again, that's just me. That's just my opinion. Yeah, and and I, that's and I what do, it feels like. I do think this is the second gold rush. Because yeah. we, you know, starting last November, December, when when uh, OpenAI came out with ChatGPT for the public, you started seeing that initial rust. And, and, you know, once the public got a hold of it, they started doing all these crazy things, good things, bad things, everything in between. And now you're seeing major companies... Amazon, open, you know, OpenAI has updated Dolly. Dolly's been around, but now it's the third version, and they've 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 got numbers and images and hands the right way in theory. Well, You've got all of these small companies that are doing things. We've talked to a bunch, a bunch of them on this show. Yeah, and uh, not just that, but you know, you you look at Nvidia now. Nvidia, yeah, yeah. Nvidia was yeah. known for you know graphics cards and mainly the consumer market. Graphics games. When you think of NVIDIA, it's like, oh, consumer. Consumer market. You have graphics cards and stuff like that. And yes, yes, they have their enterprise applications. You know, a lot of their stuff is in, you know, autonomous cars and stuff like that because their their GPU, GPUs are incredibly fast, faster than CPUs. But now they're claiming themselves as being... Uh, they're an AI company. Uh, AI company. Yeah. And I, again, it's probably just me, but it's just, I just see... The, I just see all these companies just really, 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 really trying to grab a hold of the AI gold rush. Be like, hey, how can we it, turn this into a business? How can we, some way, somehow, even though it may not make that much sense in these other applications we have, we have to do something with AI. I think you have to do something. I think you finally figured out the technology industry, Chris. Well, it's, 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 this is what this is what we've seen with no sure this and, was and we, the, we this was the with, internet from 20 25 years no, ago absolutely and and yeah yeah we can say this with any other tech that's coming sure out. cell well, phones look at cell phones look at look at cell phones yeah or, or or laptops whatever people you know if something works if something takes off mm-hmm. there's no reason to sl- stop and slow down and be like well wait a minute let's let's stop doing this no they're gonna continue to uh uh hone in on it and 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 craft it and yep make things better and they're going to continue to sell it because why not? People are buying into it. I think you're realizing that this is different from other tech fads 
such as NFT, blockchain, some of those. Well, those are fads. Those, are those, fads. those yeah. And, those but, are fads. But a lot of people initially thought that this AI stuff might be a fad. And I think, I think you've, you've seen from the stuff that's come out, it's cool enough and good enough and interesting enough to make it plausible. We, you know, here we talk about all of the mistakes that people make and all the bad stuff. And, um, but underlying all that is a feeling that this is going to be helping us down the road with our tasks or whatever, as long as companies don't go negative and then say, well, we don't need you anymore, Keith. Right. Well, and, and let me, let me just clarify yeah. my kind of view on this. I do think there are areas where AI is absolutely beneficial. Medical, medical yeah. tech. Yep. Um, you know, um, we don't, we don't report on that as much as, as I think maybe we should. Yeah. But some of that stuff tends to get dry. If I started talking does, about AI dying, you know, being able to look at a, 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 a thousand x-rays and then determine which one might be cancerous versus not cancerous. I mean, that's, that's some interesting right. stuff and beneficial to the world, but it's not as exciting as showing a picture of Princess Peach. Right. Well, so <laughs> let me go back. So okay. yeah, there's, right, there's, there's medical, yep. there's finance, there's financial industry that could definitely benefit off of it. Yep. Um, the part that I have a problem with is, is the creative aspect of it. Creative, because you're, at, you're asking a machine to create something that should have a soul. Right. And there's other avenues of AI that I think maybe we should, you know, pump the brakes on. Right. Because there's there's this risk of it potentially taking over that industry and taking taking control of all these jobs. Right. So th there yeah, are areas where I, I, think I know it there's, works, I know and there's, there's areas yeah. where it's like, uh, let's slow down. I like, know. In, you know in the entertainment space and the creative space, I'm a little concerned about the potential of AI creating video that might replace actors and actresses. But again, right now, the stuff you've seen, you know, it's AI. It hasn't gotten video the way you want it to. Yeah. These are static images. They're, they're good, but you can, I mean, I guess, could you still, we could still tell cause we saw the guy with the weird hands. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't, yeah, like I want to use it, but I don't want to use it. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. want to use it based off of principle. You know what I mean? But then but then wouldn't you be branded a Luddite then? And you, you sort of have to open yourself up to some no. willingness to use technology. No. So like like here's the thing. So like, like when, all of these cameras, that's all technology, Chris. You yeah, technology, all? but I've I <laughs> I myself adjusted the exposure, the image, the composition of it, right? It's just a tool. Just like uh, a it's paintbrush like, is to the painter, right? It's just a tool. Okay. It's, well, it's the AI right? is just a tool. You should yeah, you should it, use your creativity to to use AI tools to create better looking video and better looking cinematography and all of those projects that you do. Well, so the aspect of that I don't like is using a prompt to create the actual work, right? So going into a prop, hey, paint me an image of a lake with moonlight and, yeah. and people sitting on the grass. It's going to do the work for you. Now, there's a difference between that and let's say I'm using I'm using Premiere or DaVinci and there's AI aspects in it like, hey, can you change the voice to make it sound like another person or can you have... Uh, this feature in the software do some sort of task for me like uh, that's okay it's when you make when you allow the ai to do the whole job to yeah. do all the work you know what i mean that that's what's, where, where, what's where the, i have a problem with. what's the hardest part for you when you're editing a video it's taking all of those, uh, all of the, well, you shoot maybe two or three hours worth of things on a, a like, let's just say you're doing a, a little mini documentary or something. Yeah, yeah, you sure. shoot so much B-roll, you, you shoot all these things. You then upload it into your video editing software and then you have to go through and find the shot that you like and then decide where yeah. you're going to put it on the timeline. Is that, the, is that the, like the longest and the most repetitive part of the job? Uh, yeah, but that is the job. That's, that's the work. That's the work you have to put in. I, if there, I'd say if the there hardest was an AI part, tool that took all those clips and then created a, a, a video that made sense to you. Now, I don't think it would at this point. I think you still have human judgment and you know what makes a good introduction, what makes a good, you know, a beginning, a middle and an end. I think a lot of these AI tools will just throw them all together into a slideshow and then it would look really bad. See that that's the part that I think is dangerous. 
because now you're you're, comp- you're that's the job of the editor, right? That's the job of the editor. But the, the, but on the, the other hand, if 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 there was a part where in your timeline you you figure out I'm supposed to say the word b- bonus and I end up saying banana, wouldn't a, a tool that lets you highlight that and it would fix it where you could type in he should be saying banana instead of bonus? Or the yeah, I can see where that can be useful, but again, that, we got to be careful with that because that could easily be misused. Well, yeah, I'm 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 going to stay away from the deep fake part of it. Yeah, sure, but, but it could be if, useful if you're yeah. correcting an error. It's a you know it's a little bit of work right now. Yeah, that that's and, that's and fine. Tools that's, like that could help. Yeah, that's fine. That's just that's honestly that's cosmetic. That that's cosmetic. Yeah, but like for me, the hardest part. Let's say you know it's a it's a mini vignette. It's a it's a mini doc, right? The hardest part is actually crafting the narrative. With from the A roll, crafting the narrative is the hardest part. Making a, a succinct story out of something, and if we allow AI to now do that hardest part, well, that takes the creativity out of it. It now has become soulless. Yeah, would that be beneficial to me in terms of time? Oh, absolutely. But it's no longer mine. It's no longer mine, and, and yeah, I think I, that's that's what I have. A I, problem I, with. I think it's a valid concern, and. Y- your your concerns your concerns have been noted. We'll put this in your file. Uh, I think this will allow people that don't have access to people like you or people like me to maybe experiment into something that they haven't been using before. Even even Photoshop and Premiere and software like that, there is a, a bar that you have to meet in order to use it. Um, and you and I took the time to learn those tools. Yeah. A lot. What I'm seeing now is everybody, you know, my kids can take everything that's on this phone. They can take all of the images on the phone and they can create social media worth video edited type posts just through the phone. They don't need to use Photoshop. They don't need to use these tools. And there's going to be AI that's going to be integrated into these things. Next, you're going to see, I'm going to be able to film something and with this phone and create a social media post without even getting back to my video editor that it, it's, it's interesting and it terrifies me at the same time. So, yeah. and, and this is, we're already seeing this there's already influencers out there that don't have any of this equipment. They just shoot with a phone and a ring light and, and then they edit it on their phone and boom, it's up and you've got, you could do five of those shows a day and then you've got five, five clips that, yeah, go, that and, go viral. And that's fine. I, th- I think that's a perfect example of just having the equipment but, easily accessible. Yeah. It's accessible. It's right. cheaper. It's, it's smaller. Don't, but don't you believe in the democratization of, of technology that can allow everybody to create a creator? Because I have this debate too sometimes. Like I think that some people shouldn't shouldn't be creators. Yeah, I know. It's, it's fine. It's just... Uh, again, here's my stance. I, th- I think there's aspects of it that are useful and helpful. It's the aspect of it that removes that job from the playing field. Okay. I That's don't, it. I don't think we're there That's yet. It. We might get there. Sure. I, but I, I, the more we talk about it, the more people are going to be on gonna, our side. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I think we, we all, we all need video editors. We, we need video editors. I, you know, I, I, I don't think, you know what this also thing, this reminds me of, and again, this is going to show a little bit of my age, but remember when, and you might not even remember this stuff, but desktop publishing came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was probably a, uh, there was a program called Print Shop. Yeah. It was the early days of, you know, hey, I want to create a newsletter for my company or whatever. And uh, uh, there was a program called Quark Express, which allowed desktop publishing. And the early days of the Mac, when you would have a Mac or a Windows, and, and this, this happened in Windows too, you get a list of 30 fonts, right, yeah. for your thing. We, I worked with people who thought Brush Script was the best font on the freaking planet. Okay. And, would, and he, there was this one editor I had who would give me a, a, a design of a page and he would have brush script and I go get rid of that stupid font like that. You know, again, I knew enough about fonts to know that brush script was a horrible font. And you saw this in, in the, the, in some of the, the internet days where everybody used comic sans, mm-hmm. right? 
And it became Comic Sans now is a joke in the world of you should never use this font if you want to be taken seriously and everything. So there was those level of professionals that knew enough about graphic design and knew enough about what looks good to tell the people that were just trying to experiment for the first time, hey, this is awful. And I think you you will get that with some of these AI tools. It'll be easy and accessible to a lot of these people, but it's going to be people like you and me that know this stuff that come back and say, you can't do this. You have to do this. You have to do this to at least make it look better and make it look less like an AI did it. Right. Maybe that's where, maybe that's where we'll be useful in this, in this, in this future world. I mean, we'll, we'll have to do what we're doing today. We'll, you know, just keep an eye on it and see the direction it's heading and, you know, comment where we can comment. Right. And just, you know, give our, our thoughts and opinions but on we'd it. But so. we both do agree that the, the second gold rush is probably starting at this point. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. All right, got anything else you want to talk about? No, that's pretty much it. All right, good to, good to see you again, Chris. Yeah, same here. All right, that's all the time we have for today's episode. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, add any comments that you have below. Join us every week for new episodes of Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. Thanks for watching.